Without doubt, the universe has been expanding since the Big Bang, but it is by no means clear that it will continue to expand forever. If there is less than a certain amount of matter in the universe, then the mutual gravitation of the receding galaxies will be insufficient to stop the expansion, and the universe will run away forever. But if there is more matter than we can see, hidden away in black holes, say, or in hot but invisible gas between the galaxies, then the universe holds together and partakes of a very Indian succession of cycles, expansion followed by contraction, cosmos upon cosmos, universes without end. If we live in such an oscillating universe, then the Big Bang is not the creation of the cosmos, but merely the end of the previous cycle, the destruction of the last incarnation of the cosmos. Neither of these modern cosmologies may be altogether to our liking. In one cosmology, the universe is created somehow from nothing 15 to 20 billion years ago and expands forever. The galaxies mutually receding until the last one disappears over our cosmic horizon. Then the galactic astronomers are out of business. The stars cool and die. Matter itself decays and the universe becomes a thin, cold haze of elementary particles. In the other, the oscillating universe, the cosmos has no beginning and no end. And we are in the midst of an infinite cycle of cosmic deaths and rebirths, with no information trickling through the cusps of the oscillation. Nothing of the galaxies, stars, planets, life forms, civilizations evolved in the previous incarnation of the universe trickles through the cusp flitters past the Big Bang to be known in our universe. The death of the universe in either cosmology may seem a little depressing, but we may take some solace in the time scales involved. These events will take tens of billions of years or more. Human beings or our descendants, whoever they might be, can do a great deal of good in tens of billions of years before the cosmos dies. If the universe truly oscillates, if the modern scientific version of the old Hindu cosmology is valid, then still stranger questions arise. Some scientists think that when redshift is followed by blue shift, causality will be inverted and effects will precede causes. First, the ripples spread out from a point on the water's surface. Then I throw the stone into the pond. Some scientists wonder, in an oscillating universe, about what happens at the cusps, at the transition from contraction to expansion. Some think that the laws of nature are then randomly reshuffled, that the kinds of physics and chemistry we have in this universe represent only one of an infinite range of possible natural laws. It is easy to see that only a very restricted range of laws of nature are consistent with galaxies and stars, planets, life, and intelligence. If the laws of nature are randomly reshuffled at the cusps, then it is only the most extraordinary coincidence that the cosmic slot machine has this time come up with a universe consistent with us. Do we live in a universe which expands forever or in one where there is a nested set of infinite cycles? There's a way to find out the answer to that question, not by mysticism, but through science, by making an accurate census of the total amount of matter in the universe, or 
by seeing to the very edge of the cosmos. Radio telescopes are able to detect distant quasars billions of light years away, expanding with the fabric of space. By looking far out into space, we are also looking far back into time, back toward the horizon of the universe, back toward the epoch of the Big Bang. Radio telescopes have even detected the cosmic background radiation, the fires of the Big Bang, cooled and redshifted, faintly echoing down the corridors of time. This is the Very Large Array, a collection of 17 separate radio telescopes all working collectively in a remote region of New Mexico. Modern radio telescopes are exquisitely sensitive. A distant quasar is so faint that its received radiation by some such telescope amounts to maybe a quadrillionth of a watt. In fact, this is a reasonably stunning piece of information. The total amount of energy ever received by all the radio telescopes on the planet Earth is less than the energy of a single snowflake striking the ground. In detecting the cosmic background radiation, in counting quasars, in searching for intelligent signals from space, radio astronomers are dealing with amounts of energy which are barely there at all. These radio telescopes, rising like giant flowers from the New Mexico desert, are monuments to human ingenuity. The faint radio waves are collected, focused, assembled, and amplified, and then converted into pictures of nebulae, galaxies, and quasars. If you had eyes that worked in radio light, they'd probably be bigger than wagon wheels, and this is the universe you'd see. An elliptical galaxy, for example, leaving behind it a long wake glowing in radio waves. Radio waves reveal a universe of quasars, interacting galaxies, titanic explosions. Every time we use another kind of light to view the cosmos, we open a new door of perception. As the murmurs from the edge of the cosmos slowly accumulate, our understanding grows. This is an exploration of the ancient and the invisible, a continuing human inquiry into the grand cosmological questions. Another important recent finding was made by X-ray observatories in Earth orbit. Artificial satellites launched to view the sky, not in ordinary visible light, not in radio waves, but in X-ray light. There seems to be an immense cloud of extremely hot hydrogen glowing in X-rays between some galaxies. Now, if this amount of intergalactic matter were typical of all clusters of galaxies, then there may be just enough matter to close the cosmos and to trap us forever in an oscillating universe. If the cosmos is closed, there's a strange, haunting, evocative possibility, one of the most exquisite conjectures in science or religion. It's entirely undemonstrated, it may never be proved, but it's stirring. Our entire universe, 
to the furthest galaxy, we are told, is no more than a closed electron in a far grander universe we can never see. And that universe is only an elementary particle in another still greater universe, and so on forever. Also, every electron in our universe, it is claimed, is an entire miniature cosmos containing galaxies and stars and life and electrons. Every one of those electrons contains a still smaller universe, an infinite regression up and down. Every human generation has asked about the origin and fate of the cosmos. Ours is the first generation with a real chance of finding some of the answers. One way or another, we are poised at the edge of forever.